Hello, everybody. I'd like to mil welcome everyone to the November meeting of the Merceboro Parks and Recreation Commission. And as always, always our uh, pleasure, I'm going to call on Councilman uh, Rick LaLance for a prayer and pledge, please. Okay, if you'll bow with me. Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for all the blessings um, that we have. We thank you for the blessings in this city. Uh, we're thankful to be here in this week with uh, last week behind us. Thank you for the blessing you poured on us. Um, Lord, hope that you'll be with us today and the decisions we make. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Rick. And in front of us, we have uh, uh, last meeting's uh, last month's minutes. And if you'll look at it, I'll accept a motion to uh, approve the minutes. If there's no questions or comments on the minutes, I'll move for approval. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes. Okay, first uh, item of new business is we are uh, gracious, grateful to have a new uh, committee person here, and we have Dr. Charlie Ap Ap Apigian. 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 You said it correctly. There you go. I had, I've been mm -hmm. saying it correct the whole time until I was on stage. So, <laughs> Dr. Charlie Apigian. Thank you. Yep. From MTSU. So, if you want to give us a few words and tell us what you've been up to. Thanks, Eddie. I appreciate it, and thanks uh, to the uh, commission members uh, for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Uh, I have been involved with Murfreesboro Parks and Rec going back to 2009. Actually, it was August 22nd, 2009. We had our first kids triathlon here in town. And since that time, I have uh, uh, been blessed to work with many amazing individuals in Murfreesboro Parks and Rec, all the way from the top, all the way down to uh, those that help put barrels out for our races. And since that time, we've done 21 races, uh, specifically for kids only. And I've helped with a lot of other races in town, worked with the police uh, just with the middle half just a couple of weeks ago and had a wonderful time doing that. And so to give a little bit more, uh, I am um, very excited for that opportunity. So thanks to all of you for giving me this pleasure. So Thank you. Thanks. We're glad, glad you're here. Nate, you might want to mention to him about our uh, suggested requirement that new uh, commissioners uh, uh, attend the polar bear yeah, plunge it's, it's a requirement uh, so <laughs> bring it on dr Pegan, we look forward to having you there uh right. leading the first jump in oh i think we'll hope it's really cold that day too yes, i'll take it <laughs> okay next item of new business uh I believe you're up angela and we've got a consideration of uh, our mission statement yes sir murfreesboro parks and recreation department continues to grow and improve and we have a superior team that are working every day in order to to serve this community um, as we have been looking at our processes and our decision making um, paths one of the things that we really felt needed attention was our mission statement um, we need a mission statement that really reflects our goals that helps to guide us that helps to um, serve and recognize where we are today in 2017. Uh, we recently formed a committee of staff members led by our cultural arts coordinator, Pam Williams, and had representatives from each of our divisions internally. What that committee did was reached out um, internally to other staff members and then externally to the community and surveyed and asked questions about what the Parks and Rec Department meant to them. What, would, um, what are some words that they would use to describe um, how parks serve them, how they would feel if parks were no longer present, um, really just looking for, for some guiding principles. What the committee found in, in those surveys was that our staff tended to focus on the services that we delivered, um, talking about the educational aspects or the things that we did. The community responses were more geared toward, um, toward community, towards family, um, towards some of the things, of course, that they receive um, from those broader benefits of the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, what our staff did um, past that point was to create what they called word clouds, taking a lot of keywords from those surveys and just putting them on the board like a very visual representation 
of, of some of that feedback. They took that, they came together and spent a significant amount of time um, drafting and revising and re-revising and came together to um, um, identify those key concepts and put them in in the form that is before you now and I want to read that to you I'm really proud of what they came up with I think it is um, relevant and and effective and it, it motivates me uh, personally in, in that decision process and in the the manner in which it came together as well so that mission statement that we have proposed before you now is to provide vibrant public spaces and inclusive programs delivered with the with visionary leadership and caring staff that engage the individual and strengthen the community. Um, I want to thank the group that, that worked together with that, Pam Williams, um, Brittany Garrett, um, several others on our team that, that put a lot of time into, into every aspect of that. Um, our next step, of course, is to, to bring that to you. Um, and we would like to uh, request your endorsement and approval as we move forward with this statement. Thanks, Angela. Any questions about the mission <coughs> statement? Angela, I, I, first of all, I, I love the mission statement. I think it's a fantastic presentation of what we represent and what we do. And, and, and I know the extremes are out there as far as our educational opportunities and our exposure of arts, but it's also important that for some people that we just have green spaces. And so, so I think it's a, 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 an important thing that we make sure that we're um, trying to satisfy all of our uh, citizens in our community. And uh, I think that the ultimate goal, whether we're trying to strengthen them physically, strengthen them mentally, or, or just uh, give them a place that, that they can go and uh, find um, a secluded place that they can just get some rest and relaxation and, and uh, uh, get, get comfortable. Uh, I, I would... Uh, like to make one small amendment to the um, uh, statement and that would be uh, to provide vibrant public spaces include programs deliver the uh, visionary leadership caring staff engage the individuals engage individual and strengthen the quality of life for our community so so basically it's it's it, the very last uh, lot, uh, part of it there uh, quality of life for our community, I think, would be a nice addition to the statement. And uh, um, if if that were to to be added, I think I would I would be more comfortable with it because it's it is our recreation department. And when I say our, I'm not talking about our city's uh, leadership or our uh, it's it's our city and and our citizens that uh, pay for all these products and, and and benefits that we have within our park system and. I think that would be a nice addition to the state. Okay, thank you. Appreciate that feedback. Yeah, yeah. Any other comments or thoughts? <clears throat> Is everybody we're going to be okay with the uh, with the change and the addition here? I mean, we can vote on the yeah. amendment if yeah. you want to, yeah. and then okay. if we get approval on that, then we'll vote on the total statement. Let's do that. All right. So, uh, somebody want to make a motion? For the amendment, I'll make the motion for the amendment. Councilman Smotherman, okay. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. All right. So moving right along, uh, I'll hear a motion that we accept the amended uh, mission statement. Do I do I hear that? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay, we have a new mission statement. Thank you so much, Angela. Thank Very good. You. Good work. Appreciate that. Okay, I think you're still up, Angela. We are going to talk about the uh, West Park. Yes. A little bit. We, um, in our June meeting of this commission, um, brought to you a, a public parks, parklands, and park facilities naming policy. This committee um, reviewed that policy and, and approved it. It went on to city council where it was also approved. Um, and that is the guiding um, direction that we now have in naming our public parks, parklands, and park facilities. What we wanted to discuss with you today um, is the naming of our West Park. We've been calling it West Park for some time, um, and we are excited for it to, um, to have a name that is uh, selected in accordance with this policy, which um, basically gives this group the authority to make a recommendation to council. 
uh, and what we would like to do as a part of that is under the assumption that um, that public input uh, and suggestions for that are to be considered. We um, put together, Mr. Williams worked with our, our um, IT department in putting together a um, simple form online that um, will be, with this group's approval of the process, um, will be available on our website, on the Parks and Rec page of the city's website, so that anyone who has input, who has a suggestion, um, can provide that suggested name and an explanation of why they would like to see that be the name. The intent of this form was to make it as simple as possible so people could put just their name in, their email, and then put in their suggested, uh, suggested name with an explanation um, to that suggested name. So uh, this will be on the Parks and Recreation page. It would be murfreesboro10.gov slash parks. be right on the front of that. Uh, and the goal is to take all of that information, get it in, and bring it back to you in January with all of the suggestions that the community puts in. Very good. Any thoughts or questions? Okay. Do I hear a motion that we accept this as part of the, the name process? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion passes. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Bart, <laughs> give us a deal. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the commission, I, I want to come to you today with a couple of items uh, to discuss. Uh, if you could bring up the flyer on our BOGO special. Uh, it's up on the screen now. An item that I want to bring you today is seeking approval for the annual buy one, get one free sale of our individual monthly or yearly facility passes that will be offered at Sportscom in Patterson Park. Uh, this sale has been a very popular sale that we have started in 19, I mean in 2003, excuse me, and it's something we have offered this year is, an, is a new uh, special for our city residents. They will have a discount with proof of residency, so we, and we are proposing to start this sale on uh, December, Monday, December the 11th, and we will close it down on Saturday, January 13th, 2018. And we have made a change on our uh, the buy one get one yearly and monthly sale. We're going to extend that to January the 13th instead of having the 25% off. We do have a lot of customers that come in or are on a vacation or been out of town and were not able to get there before the first of the year. So I think it will greatly benefit our department and our customers to extend it to the 13th and I have the buy one get one free all the way to January the 13th of next year. So with that, I respectfully request the commission's approval for the buy one get one free sale that was starting in December. I move to approve. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay, that aye. passes. Okay, Bart, looks like you are still up. Okay. Uh, what I'll do, I want to uh, bring up our uh, slides on our summer recap. I was coming <laughs> last month for a presentation and that meeting was canceled. so. I am here at the starting of cold weather for our summer recap. Maybe make us feel a little better. So what we do, uh, Mr. Chairman and members of the commission, today I want to give you the recap of our past summer activities. Along with all the baseball and softball games going on at McKnight Park, we, uh, we host camps from all ages, but we really get it kicked off on a Memorial Day weekend as uh, Burrow Beach opens with Memorial Day Madness that weekend and on Monday, we uh, celebrate Memorial Day at Rural Beach for making a fun day with food, fun, games provided by our excellent aquatic staff. We kicked off our camp season this, with the first week of June as Thomas Laird and his athletics staff had the first of five sports camps. In each of these camps we have 60 kids and they cover a sport in the morning each day of the week and take a break for lunch and then they come back in the afternoon for a swim at Burrow Beach as they hang out with their friends around the pool area. The next week, we held the first of two guard start camps as youngsters ages 11 through 14 become an American Red Cross junior lifeguard for a week as they learn first aid, CPR, water rescues, and also receive a certified junior lifeguard shirt. The next week, we offered the first of two ultimate babysitters camps as youngsters 12 and up learn the child and babysitting safety and also became certified in infant and child CPR, AED, and first aid training. It was taught by our wellness fitness coordinator, Allison Davidson. 
Our attention then turned to planning and the preparation for annual, Ju annual July the 4th celebration under the stars. As our day kicked off for the day at Borough Beach, begin at 10 a.m. as hundreds of youngsters and adults enjoy the day around the pool with food, fun, and games, and music provided by our favorite DJ, Tam Clark. All attention then turned to the afternoon as we provided food trucks, games, and music leading up to the grand finale as our Murfreesboro Symphony played and fireworks lit up the skies over Murfreesboro to the delight of thousands that gathered to enjoy one of our favorite aspects of the year and events. The rest of July was filled with two more sports camps, a guard start camp, another ultimate babysitting camp, and our camps ended with our cheerleading camp at the end of July as all kids were getting ready to go back to school the first week of August. As the kids go back to school, we do offer a time at Borough Beach for the mom and tots time as young children five, five years and under can enjoy the, the pool and don't have all the crowds that we have in June and July. Also on Tuesday, August 1st, Borough Beach hosted the annual National Night Out event as hundreds came out for a free swim along with hot dogs and chips to learn about the way to combat crime in our city and enjoy a night swim with all their family and friends. Borough Beach also hosted our annual Flick and Float as participants enjoyed a movie at, to the outdoor pool and enjoy a free swim. Borough Beach was open every weekend this past summer and every weekend through August we officially had rentals in, uh, uh, on the weekends and also had rentals in the uh, cabanas that we offer out there by the pool. We also have our, our, our cardboard regatta, which uh, is boats are made only of cardboard, and we uh, only had one boat sink, but what do you think is made of cardboard? <laughs> so our summer rentals came in very strong at Borough Beach also, as the pool is rented every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night, as I mentioned. Uh, we had two swim teams that we that used the pool also early in the morning and also another in the evening to train the youngsters in the art of competitive swimming. We partnered with XL Aquatics in providing swim lessons to hundreds of youngsters over the summer to get them prepared for a lifetime of swimming. Running Borough Beach is a big job and I do want to commend Kyle Goss and Kerry Clemens for the great job they do in keeping our pool going do, during peak times and also our concession staff in the direction of operations Tommy Gregory by providing refreshments for all our hungry swimmers. Our last event at Borough Beach this past summer was our annual puppy plunge as we had over 400 canines converge on Borough Beach as this event has become one of our favorites. This year our staff raised $600 that was donated to a local association known as PAWS which helps get uh, unwanted cats and dogs adopted. This past summer we also kicked off our Miracle League is over the June and July, youngsters enjoyed having an organized league to play baseball, and it, which was helped by hundreds of volunteers throughout our city, which makes this such a great place to live. Even our own David Price came out one Saturday and enjoyed playing with the kids. And if you pass by there any time, any day when the gates are open, the, the playground is used very much also, and it's been a very popular addition to the McKnight Park. We are now preparing all our information to get our customers about the new pricing changes beginning in December of the year and also preparing for a buy one get run free discount that will take place in December. And it is even not too late to think about the polar bear plunge that will take effect in January 2018. And uh, Charlie, we've already got you signed up, so you'll be ready to go. Bring it on. And we will have a couple of special events coming in December, our annual customer appreciation day and also we will have our uh, holiday lock-in too. So uh, that's a small summary of what we did. There is a lot of, a lot of things going on with your mm -hmm. help and approval. Uh, Sportscom McKnight Park has become very popular and it's much improved. Awesome, Bart. Thank you and your staff so much for everything y'all do out there for the, for the community and so many activities and there's nothing small about that summer. <laughs> any, any questions or comments for Bart? I did notice that I finally get the, the senior discount this year. So That's correct. At age 60, that'll be appreciated. Yeah, okay. very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Bart. <laughs> so next on the agenda, I see Becky hanging around, but Angela, you want to go ahead and update us on some um, projects? 
The project that I am most excited, um, if you have been over on the south side of town, you will have seen some construction. We have been discussing the extension of the Stones River Greenway for um, several years. Our phase four completion um, that connects from the um, existing terminus just south of the Kaysen Trailhead to Barfield Crescent Park is actually under construction now. Um, the, the front of our office has um, dozers and the like now as they work on that connection trailhead at Barfield Crescent Park, um, focusing on, on first building those access trailheads. So uh, a lot of people have asked which end are they starting on. Um, the answer is both in the middle. <laughs> so it is a um, certainly be a process. We look forward to its final completion but are, are very appreciative to be to this point. I think our Greenway um, offers so much to our community. That connectivity that this particular extension provides is, is key and essential. So we are um, very proud to be where we are now. The project itself is a two-year um, a construction project. Uh, they were given their notice to, to proceed in September. So by September of 2019, we should be on track for that completed project. What's the length? Three miles um, for this particular portion. It includes three river crossings. Um, so it is a, a very significant project. Awesome. Thoughts or questions? So from Thompson Lane to Case and Trail, that's eight miles one way, isn't it? Yes. And so this makes it where we can go now 11 miles one way. That's fantastic. One way with connections, when you add in the gateway trails and the spur trail, it'll bring us up to about 15 miles total in the Greenway system. Um, and with the North Murfreesboro yeah, Greenway. 1.3 miles in the North Murfreesboro. Uh, mm -hmm. Brings us to a total of, of 16. That, that's not an yeah. actually connected yet. Um, we hope to make that connection at some point in the future. So our, our trail system uh, and additional trails at Barfield Crescent Park, um, you know, we have, we have got a lot of options and um, continue to work towards that. I think that, that walkability and connectivity is something that we hear from the public and, and from our community, um, how the Greenway serves them in many ways is, is key. Very good. Okay, Miss Becky. Let us know what's getting ready to happen. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, one program that I'm gonna mention is uh, we have one month left for our Food Truck Fridays at Cannonsburg Village, and that is every Friday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. They have different trucks each Friday, and we post them on Facebook if you wanna know ahead of time who'll be there. But that will be through the end of November, Food Truck Fridays. Then we will have this Friday, which is November 3rd, our 19th annual Fall Harvest Hayride. Um, we'll have live music, campfire with marshmallows and s'mores, and a good old fashioned hayride on the Greenway. And that is uh, Friday, November 3rd from 5.30 to 8 p.m. at the General Bragg Trailhead, and it is $2 per person. Then this Saturday, November 4th, we will have our second Acorn Festival. So that's Saturday, November 4th, from 12 noon until 6 p.m. out at Oakland's Park. Um, at this point in time, you need to purchase a wristband at the door for $10 to join in the Acorn Festival. There will be six different bands there throughout the day. And it's sure to be a lot of fun, so join us for the Acorn Festival. We have extended our youth basketball registration. Usually we have it for the month of October, but we are extending it until the first player evaluations, which will be held November 17th. So you have about two and a half more weeks if you have not registered your child for youth basketball, and that is for ages five through 17. Then uh, these first few programs are in the beginning of next month. Perform Murfreesboro will be presenting Elf the Musical Junior. And we do anticipate this uh, production to be a sellout, so we are encouraging people who would like to come see Elf um, to purchase their ticket ahead of time, which can be purchased at ticketpeak.com slash perform Murfreesboro. It will probably be available to the public in about another week, but the production is December 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th. And then as Bart mentioned earlier, it is almost time for Sportscom's Customer Appreciation Day, which will be Friday, December 8th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. It'll be in the Sportscom lobby. They'll be have music and refreshments. 
and it's always a lot of fun. Everybody's welcome to join Sportscom for their Customer Appreciation Day on Friday, December 8th. And then if BART's not going to be tired enough as it is for the Customer Appreciation Day, they're also going to have their annual holiday lock-in the same evening, <laughs> Friday, December 8th for ages 8 to 15. They come to Sportscom at 7 p.m. and they do not get picked up till 7 a.m. on Saturday morning. It is $20 per person um, and registration will begin December 1st, but we want to put everybody that put that on your radar. If you want to go shopping for Christmas, you can drop your kids off at the holiday lock-in. And for more information on those programs and all of the ongoing programs and events at Murfreesboro Parks and Rec, um, you can go to our website at murfreesborotn.gov slash parks, download our rec connection, or follow us on one of our Facebook pages. Very good, Becky. Thank you. Things are busy. Yes, we are. <laughs> any, any questions or comments for Becky? Okay. All right. Good afternoon. Thanks. Thank you, Becky. Is there any other business for the commission? Again, I'd like to, to welcome Dr. Apigian to our commission. Thank you for, for joining us. And uh, if there's no other business, I'll, we'll see everybody at the Acorn Festival this weekend. Right. We stand adjourned. Okay.